Where is glass? Gone, sir. Your whole world found chemistry class on TV. The last class we met, we discussed about the organic chemistry, isn't it? Yes. And I told you that when you talk about chemistry as a course of study, it is compartmental into different categories, isn't it? Yes. Uh, uh, part of which we have organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. Are you getting me now? Yes, sir. So when you talk about organic chemistry, it is also diversified into different categories. And uh, also, when you talk about inorganic chemistry, we also have different categories of inorganic chemistry, isn't it? Yes. On inorganic chemistry alone, isn't it? Yeah. When we do analysis, that is what you do in your titration. Your acid and base titration. We call that one analytical chemistry, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh. On the inorganic chemistry, we also have another aspect of chemistry that we call the physical chemistry, isn't it? Yeah. When you talk about the physical chemistry, it is, the, it is the chemistry of chemical reaction. That is where you will be talking about the rate of reaction, isn't it? And everything that is related with the reaction in chemistry. But today, we will look into another aspect of organic chemistry that we call hydrocarbon. Say hydrocarbon. 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 Like I told you before, I said organic chemistry, organic chemistry, or organic compound as a whole. Organic compound, they are the compounds of carbon. Isn't it? Yeah. With the exception of carbon four oxide, CO2, or carbon monoxide, and trihydrocarbonate of salt. Or trihydrocarbonate of what? Salt. When you have something like this, CO2 gas, carbon four oxide gas, carbon monoxide gas, and trihydrocarbonate of every sort, they are not organic compounds. They are purely inorganic. But when you now see the compounds of carbon, with the exception of this one, they are strictly organic compounds. Like you have carbon conjoining with hydrogen. Like we have here, this is an organic compound. Isn't it? Hydrocarbon. Because it constitutes hydrogen and carbon. That is why we call it hydrocarbon. And this is also divided into saturated ones and unsaturated ones. It depends on the number of hydrogen that is attached with the carbon atom. Like here now, we have one carbon atom and it possesses yay. That this is a hydrocarbon habit. And I said hydrocarbon as an organic compound can also be divided into saturated ones and unsaturated ones. And saturation of hydrocarbon is based on the number of hydrogen that is attached to the carbon atom. Please check the board. How many hydrogen do we have with that carbon? Four. Four. That means this one is a saturated compound. Why? Because carbon is that is it is having four valent electrons. And now it needs to donate these four valent electrons in a covalent bond. That is the reason why we have four hydrogen atoms combining with it in a covalent bond. So as to attract or as to what to get these four electrons. With this one, this one has the saturation of donating the four electrons. And we now have four hydrogen, have the saturation of what? Accepting the four electrons. That's why it's a saturated compound. But when you now have something like this, C2, H4, we have two carbon atoms. You know, two carbon atoms each has four fillers electrons, isn't it? Yes. So when we now have two carbon atoms, how many valence electrons do we have put together? We have eight valence electrons. Definitely, this one is having the affinity of donating these eight valence electrons. For now, four hydrogen is attached to it. Is it saturated? And it is not saturated. That is why we call this kind of compound an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Is it clear to you now? That is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. But today, we are going into another aspect of hydrocarbon that we call petroleum. Petroleum, if you look at the chemical composition of petrol, of oil, it has both hydrogen and carbon strictly. That is why it is high one, it's also an hydrocarbon. So when you talk about petroleum or crude oil, 
crude oil is one of the natural resources that can be what? That is given by God. It's a free gift of nature. And as it is, it is always a dark, viscous liquid that is found on the other ground. If let you know, when you talk about a petroleum, a petroleum is a dark, viscous liquid that is usually found underground as a natural resource. And it is formed from something. And what is that? It is formed from the decomposition and the deposition of marine of uh, marine's habit. Let me tell you the origins of hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is originated when, it, when we have most marine habit that are found in the, in the marine habitat. When they die, they go to the bed, to the seabed and they deposit them. All the deposit materials as well also move to that particular position. And now it becomes piling up, piling up, piling up. On a, on a number of ground, it becomes a sedimentary rock. Are you getting me now? Yeah. You know, it becomes in strata or layer. So with that, the dead and decaying organic materials is always in between the, comp uh, the, the pile of stones, which is the sedimentary rock. And now, when you talk about sedimentary rock, a sedimentary rock always has portions, like the porous portions and non-porous portions. Are you getting me now? The porous portion is the portion that can allow years to pass through. Why the non-porous portion is the portion that will not allow the year to pass through? Now, when we now say the marine algae, they go and find themselves in the porous portion, they have to melt and they now move to the non-porous portion. There, the sedimentary rocks and the stones, they press them down by compressional forces to make them to become a crude oil. Is it less you now? That's how they are formed. And now, when the scientists now discover this crude oil, you know, it is useful, isn't it? So they need to extract it. And after, after extraction, they refine it for what? For use it, because it is not used as it was, as its raw form. You have to refine it to change it to the what? The, 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 the fractions, so as to what? Be useful. They now have method of extraction. Method of extraction of hydrocarbon starts with identifying where it is located. And how do they locate it? They have to subject a particular region to a particular substance that we call dynamite. Say dynamite. dynamite. They subject it to dynamite. And once it is subjected to dynamite, it is going to produce a sand that will now make them to be sensitive to maybe crude oil or is here or not. Are you getting me? Is there any question so far? No question, right? Yes. I should continue my class. Yes. Oh, oh. So when they now realize that crude oil is present based on the sand it's produced, the next thing is that they have to they have to bring the, the oil rigger, we call it a rotatory rig, which is attached with dairy, in order to extract the what? The crude oil from the what? From the oil. And from there, they are going to transfer it into a tank, which will take it to a refinery for distillation. Because crude oil constitutes many fractions, they have to distill it in a fractionating column because it has many fractions. So the, it, is, it is separated by the method of fractional distillation. Is it clear enough? And when you talk about fractional distillation, it is a separation of a mixture that is having different boiling points. Are you getting me now? Fractional distillation is a method of preparation that is used in separating a mixture that is having fractions with different boiling points. That is what we mean by fractional distillation. But ne nevertheless, let me give you the notes and we'll continue with the explanation next. Oh.